It's a pretty southern Flinders town, steeped in history, from the old butter factory to the heritage churches scattered throughout the back streets. Spend time here and two things become readily apparent. The locals' fascination with that feisty bird, the Maggie, it features on signs everywhere, and the role played by one particular family in opening up this part of South Australia. Oruru is an Aboriginal word meaning meeting of the magpies and it's long been a meeting place for the Parnell clan ever since Richard Thomas Parnell, or RT as he was known, established his blacksmith shop here back in 1880. RT's business interests grew rapidly as he ventured into the transport industry, first making buggies and wagons. Later the family's trucking empire serviced cattle stations north of Goiter's Line and cereal growing communities to the south. RT's great-grandson, John Parnell, spread the tentacles of the Parnell Trucking Empire into the remotest parts of South Australia, Western Australia and the Northern Territory. Today he's taken the foot off the pedal, so to speak, with a more relaxed life on the family farm north of Oruru. But it's his kids who continue to take the wonders of Oruru to the wider Australian community, like son Nick, who recently featured on Postcards. Now Nick regularly plays here at the Blacksmith's Chatter, the refurbished workshop where workers once made Parnell wagons and buggies and later maintained a fleet of Bedford trucks. It's been given a complete facelift, courtesy of another Parnell dynamite, Susan Wolfham, the great-great-granddaughter of old RT. Today it's a conference centre and performance space with murals recording the Parnell story. And how did you talk your old man into turning it into this sort of conference centre meeting place? I brought mum and dad into this middle of the junk and said, this is what I want to do. And they both looked at me and said, yeah, right. Um, but yeah, it took six years from basically having the idea to getting it done. Nick and other performers regularly use the old Parnell wagon as a backdrop for the annual Rhythms and Wool Bales concert, the brainchild of 27-year-old sister Susan. These are a couple of young South Australians keen to promote their patch. And with Susan as my guide, the story of what was once one of the state's most northern towns comes to life. It was in this country that the early explorers recorded the last remaining pools of surface water. And so Oruru became an important staging post for forays into the interior. People travelling through, they'd base themselves here and then go further north. So it became that spot for people um, to, to rest up for the week or the long journey ahead. From the town lookout, you take in the vast expanse of the Wallaway Plain and the Blackjack Hills in the distance. Here, just past Goiter's Line, water is gold. And the locals went to extraordinary lengths to store as much of it as possible, sometimes with comical results. They built a big weir, as you can see over there, and they got a bloke out from Germany to put in a set of uh, floodgates so that every time the creek flooded, they would let the silt down and then uh, it wouldn't fill up. And the bloke came over, put it up, and then went home and we had our first big flood. And they tried to open the floodgates and they wouldn't open. And the bloke had put them in upside down and back to front. And uh, from then on, the reservoir's just been filled up with silt and silt and more silt, and so it evaporates very quickly. It's not very deep. Despite the occasional setback, the town's grown and continues to, thanks to passionate young locals like Nick and Susan, who've done their father proud. People today can really do great things. It's just if they stick to it and keep going, you know, they, they will achieve what they want to do. Susan's love of local and family history shines through in everything she does, whether it be the blacksmith's chatter with its dining and conference facilities, or Nana's home the bed and breakfast she's established in town where Nana Parnell lived up until the early 1990s. Again, reminders of Oruru and the Parnell story are everywhere, and Susan wouldn't have it any other way. If you don't have your family around you, you don't have any history, and so you've got to keep that history alive. People forget what the older generation really do for them. For your stay in Oruru at either Maggie's Nest B&B or Nana's home, or for a seminar or event at the Blacksmith's Chatter, contact Susan on 0427 581 302.